guys, Louis here, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, Pimzo Chinese. So it's a Pimzo Chinese review, and essentially, I'm going to be asking two questions and answering them, of course, which are, uh, is Pimzo Chinese worth it? Can you expect to get fluent in five months with Pimzo Chinese? And second of all, uh, how can you get uh, Pimzo Chinese for a lot less? Because uh, as you can see, I'm on the website here, even with the 25% off, it's going to be pretty expensive. Um, I'm going to go on uh, Pimzo Chinese Mandarin here and you will see that for the five levels, it's $575. So even with 25% 20, off, it's going to be extremely expensive. All right, so um, I'm going to show you a little bit what you can expect with Pimzler first. Uh, I'm going to go to Firefox because I have my account open here. And oh yeah, just a little, I just wanted to talk about the pricing first. Instead of paying for the $575, what you can do is I have included a link in the description of this video, which will allow you to get a free trial. I think it's seven days. I'm not entirely sure, but you will be able to try the first lesson of Pimzer uh, Chinese for free. And um, after that, you will actually get a special uh, subscription plan, which is not advertised on the Pimzer website. And it's going to be the all access uh, subscription, which is about, I think I paid 21 or $22, uh, it's monthly. And then you get access to all of the languages, not just Pimzo Chinese, and it's only 21 or $22 uh, monthly. The only um, sort of drawback when compared with the, with uh, paying with, uh, you know, the $575 is essentially that, um, let me actually change, no, it's okay. Yeah, so the only drawback is that if you pay the seven, uh, the $575 here, you will get the course like for your entire life. You will get all the files, okay? With the subscription plan, uh, you're not going to get access for your entire life. It's just, you know, a monthly thing. In my opinion, it's not really a big deal because, you know, once you're done with a lesson, you're not going to need to redo it again for reasons I will explain uh, later in this video, but so here's a very short introduction of what to expect once you're inside the website um, Here I'm in the user area. I'm doing uh, Korean right now, but you know the Chinese course It's exactly uh, the same the app is pretty much the same as well So I'm just going to show it on, on my computer. So if I go to uh, lesson four Here you will see that there is an audio player. I'm just going to pause it and there are a bunch of you know skills that you can uh, practice and a bunch of things that you can review. Now the main content, really the the the, the star of the the show, the 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 main stuff is the audio content here. If I press play, there is going to be a lesson lasting 30 minutes, and this is the only thing I do. To be honest, I don't do any of the other activities. Maybe they're good, maybe they're not. I don't know to be honest, but. The audio content here is the star of the show. This is what you should be doing. This is the reason why Pimsleur is so effective and it's so famous. It's one of the best uh, established courses um, in, the, in the world, essentially, for language, language learning. And this is an audio course. And each audio course, I'm not gonna play it here for uh, copyright reasons and you wouldn't hear the audio anyways. But essentially what's gonna happen is that there, you're going to uh, listen to a conversation in Chinese between two native speakers. <clears throat> and then there is going to be an American sort of narrator, like a teacher, sort of drilling you on this conversation very progressively and helping you to, uh, in 30 minutes, you will actually be able to participate in that conversation. And uh, essentially that's it. It's basically based around a uh, conversation. So Pimzo Chinese, it's five levels. Each level is going to be 30 lessons, just like this, you know, 30 minutes. So every single day, you're supposed to consume one lesson. You're supposed to do one lesson. And so it's 30 minutes that you can do in your car, uh, while you're commuting, while you're working out. And that's basically it. You just wait for 150 days. It's about five months and you have uh, done the entire program. Now, now let me answer the main question of this video, which is, is it worth it? Is it effective? Can you expect to get fluent with Pimzo Chinese alone? And I'm going to break this down into three uh, departments, which are, you know, pronunciation. How far can you expect uh, to get with uh, your Chinese pronunciation with Pimzler? Uh, grammar, how far can you expect to get with Pimzler Chinese as far as, you know, grammar and then vocabulary? 
Uh, now, let me just give you an overview of like um, the, the, my answer to this, to this question of is Pimsleur worth it? My honest opinion is that any Pimsleur program is absolutely worth it. You can get to a very good level in Chinese just doing the entire Pimsleur uh, Chinese program. You're not going to be at a native level, you know, no doubt about this. But you can have very satisfying conversations about everyday topics with a Chinese person, uh, you know, on on uh, on the internet or in real life or you know whatever. You can have a level at which, you know, if your friends hear you uh, speaking in in Chinese to a Chinese person, they're going to be very impressed. If if you speak to a Chinese person after five months of doing you know just Pimsleur, I'm not talking about like you don't need to do to do anything else. And you tell that Chinese person, "Hey, look, I've been studying Chinese for five years, uh, for five months." They're going to be super impressed, okay? Because the results really speak for themselves, uh, literally. So now let me let me just um, give you some of my arguments why Pimsleur is so effective. And this is not just from my own experience, but this is from the experience of a lot of people that I have seen using not necessarily Pimsleur, but a lot of different language programs that uh, didn't necessarily work and I've also looked into the scientific literature as far as you know which are the essential components of a an effective language program so I have my outline here and uh, I'm going to tell you first of all for the pronunciation part why it is uh, so effective so Pronunciation is a dreaded part of the Chinese language, you know, no doubt. Uh, you have the, you know, pronunciation, uh, tones. If you're a native English speaker, then you're probably wondering, you know, are Chinese people really going to be able to understand me with all the, the tones and the different pronunciation uh, rules? What you need to understand is that with pronunciation, actually, it's not as uh, daunting of a task as it may sound. You know, when, uh, you know, people think about the three aspects of uh, a language, pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary, very often they think, you know, pronunciation and grammar, those are the two most difficult things. And, you know, with Chinese, uh, I think it's even more so the case that people really dread uh, pronunciation and tones, especially. But... What you need to understand is that in most languages, and when, when you look at the whole, the whole um, you know, uh, like the, all of the languages that we have on earth, uh, most of them only have actually from anywhere from 15 or, you know, 12 different sounds up to 60, you know, and, you know, 12 to 15, I think I put it in my notes here. Uh, yeah, it's Hawaiian. So Hawaiian has about 15 different sounds uh, that make up the entire language. Very, very, um, very simple. It's the same for Tahitian here. You know, I'm in Tahiti. Uh, the Tahitian language, it may not be a very simple, langu uh, simple language to learn, but there are only 15 sounds. So it's pretty easy in that sense. The most complicated languages in terms of pronunciation only have about 60 sounds, and it may sound like a lot. And these are the languages uh, from the... Uh, I think I looked it up on the internet. It's Caucasus. Um, it's you know uh, languages from um, uh, you know I you know to be honest I don't remember exactly the the names of the country. Uh, Caucasus. Caucasus. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Azerbaijan and Georgia and all that. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering those. Uh, those names, but you know, anyways, you sort of get uh, the area that I'm talking about in this region. And I'm so sorry if you come from one of these countries and I just butchered the the, the names of those countries. But these countries apparently have um, up to sixty different sounds that make up uh, their their language. I don't know exactly for Chinese, but my point is that most languages that you're going to try to learn have approximately half of that. They have, on average, 32 sounds. That's, uh, that's, that's the average. And so after a few weeks of studying Chinese with Pimsleur Chinese, you will be able to actually understand to, uh, to really master 
uh, you know, those sounds very well. And after a few weeks, it should only be uh, about, you know, one or two, you know, very few sounds that you will have struggle, uh, that we, you will struggle reproducing on your own. So this is really not something that uh, you should worry about, especially with Pimsleur. You're, <clears throat> you're going to do a lot of listening and you're going to do a lot of speaking. So pronunciation will really not be a problem when compared with, you know, uh, doing a textbook or doing university uh, uh, classes or anything like that. All right, now now let me talk about uh, grammar here because I know that a lot of people uh, dread grammar, especially you know if you're if you're a native uh, English speaker or any European language, you're thinking to yourself Chinese. You know, it's one of those Asian languages, and it's really really hard. Excuse me. <clears throat> It's much harder. It's very, very different from European languages. It's what it's um, uh, the Chinese language is what the FSI, which is the Foreign Service Institute, uh, classifies as a category four language, which is uh, the highest category of uh, languages as far as you know how difficult it is or how long it takes to actually acquire uh, that language. So Chinese is category four along with uh, Japanese, uh, Arabic, and I think Korean. So really, really hard, takes a lot of time. And so you're probably wondering, can I actually uh, become fluent, uh, have a decent, uh, have a good command of the Chinese grammar just with Pimsleur? And uh, what you need to understand is that actually grammar in um, any language, as a matter of fact, is there's not a lot of grammar. When you look at the bulk of the grammar, you know, 95% of it, it could fit in a year-long college course or about you know two years of, of high school. So it's not a lot compared with vocabulary. A lot of people are scared of Chinese pronunciation and Chinese grammar, but the most difficult point is actually going to be the third point I'm going to talk about, which is vocabulary. So this is nothing to be scared about uh, grammar. It's, there's not a lot of content. Now, <clears throat> what's going to happen is that uh, you know, if you go to college and you study Chinese, or if you go to, to school and ch study Chinese, most of the time what they're going to do is that they're going to introduce the, uh, you know, all the grammar during the first and the second year, and then um, during the, the, the next years, they're basically going to repeat the same grammar over and over again, maybe with a little bit more advanced points, but with more complex uh, sentences. That's basically what it is. Now, the... The common way, the normal, quote unquote, normal ways um, in which grammar is introduced in the school system and, you know, in college is that uh, they organize, it's organized in a sequential way. So you're going to learn about, you know, the, the present and then the past and then, you know, it's very sequential, it's very predictable and linguists really like that, grammarians really like that because it gives a sense of, uh, uh, you know, it gives a certain order and it makes it, it makes the grammar feel very controlled. That's sort of a non-organic way of teaching uh, grammar. Now, uh, in the Pimsleur book that I read, you know, because uh, Pimsleur is actually from Dr. Paul Pimsleur, he wrote a very short book that I absolutely recommend. If you go on Amazon, you can find it, and it's about how to learn language uh, languages, and it's about the research that Dr. Paul Pimsleur did on language learning, you know, a few decades ago, essentially he compares that, you know, like the non-organic way of learning grammar to, uh, it's like you, uh, you know, presenting grammar in the sequ sequential way, it's the equivalent of planting a tree and expecting like a, uh, a, a leaf to grow out of it and it's perfect, it's big, it's beautiful. When, as a matter of fact, what you should expect is that, you know, the tree is going to grow and there are going to be branches and twigs and then the trees and then the leaves are going to form very progressively and at the appropriate time. This is much more organic. And the problem with this non-organic way of learning grammar, which is, you know, the sequential way, the, the school system way, is that you need to be very uh, extremely self-motivated to not quit because you're learning things in a sequential way, but it's not necessarily natural, meaning that you're not going to be able to apply that in a real world scenario. You, you're not going to consider good, you're not going to consider yourself good 
after even you know months or years of learning. So imagine, for example, that you're learning Chinese and you only learn about the present tense, okay, and you spend months on it or maybe weeks, and then you learn the past tense, but you completely ignore uh, things like、um, I don't know, like、uh, you know, other tenses and other other grammatical、uh, grammar constructs. You're not going to be able to communicate that way. Like, there's no way. It's very incomplete. Whereas,、uh, if you learn things in a more organic way, in a way that's more natural, you do a little bit of present, like the the most important present、uh, sort of structures, and then the past、uh, structures, and then the future structures. Maybe not in an exhaustive way, but in a way that is much more natural, in a way that you can actually start using the language right away. This is so much more motivating, rather than you know when compared with just doing things in a sequential way where you're not able to communicate even after years of learning Chinese. And this is a very big problem because statistics clearly show that、uh, you know language students, even in school, even even in colleges. They're very likely to quit. Most of them actually quit. So, I mean, what can you expect as someone who is learning a language on? You know, you're learning Chinese on your own. It's difficult. It takes time, and if you don't have that motivation, those instant gains, those instant that that、uh, instant gratification, it's going to be very, very hard, and you're very, very likely to quit. And so, what Pemsler does is that it presents grammar in a much more intuitive way. So. Uh, think of it as like a,、uh, for example, a child that learns、uh, grammar. You know, kids they don't dread grammar.、Uh, okay, they just learn and they hear and they understand intuitively the grammar, and they they're not like freaked out. They're not like, oh my god, I'm not speaking the language correctly. Well, with if you go through the Pinsel program, it's going to be very very similar in the sense that you're going to listen to the conversation. Uh, the conversations、uh, of you know each lesson every every single day, and you're not going to dread grammar because to you grammar is not going to be a set of complex rules. It's just going to be sort of like does it sound right? Does it sound natural? Because at this point, at the end of the program, at the end of the 150 days, you will have a very good sense of Chinese grammar, even though you don't you don't know the explicit rules, but you know it implicitly. You know it sort of in In a very intuitive way, because you've listened to so much Chinese during the five months, so、uh, you will not fear grammar with Pimsel Chinese, and you will have a pretty good command of the Chinese grammar as well. My observation as well is that you know with Pims with、um, a lot of the students, a lot of people, a lot of the people that don't necessarily use Pimsel. As a matter of fact, most people don't. Most people don't use Pimsel.、Um, The people who learn languages in a more intuitive, in a more organic way, just like Pimsler, they have a better, better command. They have a better feel for the grammar of the language. If you have very intricate, very complicated grammar rules,、uh, grammatical rules, then the people who actually learned by ear, intuitively, they're going to be able to tell you, no, okay, it doesn't sound right. That's not how you say it. Whereas people who actually learn it in a more sequential, non-organic, artificial way, it's much harder because they only know the theoretical rules and they don't. They haven't heard as much.、Uh, they haven't listened to as much chi- Chinese as、uh, you have with、uh, Pimsler. Now, to、uh, I just want to、uh, talk about the last point here as far as grammar goes. So as I said, you know, Pimsler is actually was a Uh, a researcher in applied linguistics at UCLA and other universities, and he did an experiment with his colleagues as well. Is that、uh, he took students? I think it was for the French language, if I'm not, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's right. And what he did is that、uh, he had basically two classrooms,、um, and they were all. The goal was to learn about. French、uh, pronouns. It's pretty complicated, and you know this. This is linked to Chinese, so.、Um, Um, <clears throat> what I want to say, 
Oh yeah, so they were learning about French pronouns, ex excuse me, and he basically tested two approaches of teaching grammar. The first was simply with, you know, audio drills, exactly what you will find in the uh, Pimsleur uh, uh, program. And the second way of teaching the, the grammar was essentially just, you know, the traditional sort of, uh, here are the rules and here's the present tense, here's the past tense and so on. <clears throat> excuse me and so here they were teaching you know french pronouns but it could as well have been chinese the results would have been the same essentially what they found is that the students that did only 60 minutes of um of just this intuitive approach exactly what you will find in the PIMSA programs uh, had the same results or a little bit better results than the students that took one week of college classes just learning about French pronouns. And the reason is, as I said, 60 minutes of just learning grammar intuitively, it's a lot more powerful than just knowing the explicit rules but not actually uh, uh, have these mental representations in your mind that and you know if you want to have those mental representations the only way you the only way you can build them is by listening and really be um, immersed in the language all right so I think we're pretty much done with the grammar I just want to talk about uh, another point as well with Pimsleur Chinese is uh, about pronouns and verbs. Now, it doesn't necessarily apply to the Chinese language as well as, you know, Romance languages like French and Italian, but still I want to touch on it a little bit. So, when you have a language course in uh, university and college or a, you know, self, um, uh, a program like PIMSA where you're teaching yourself uh, Chinese, then about 50% of that program is going to be about pronouns and verbs. And uh, so that's a pretty big part of it. And a lot of people have actually have this anguish. They're very anxious about, uh, you know, regular verbs and irregular verbs. I know it's, uh, it's a very big source of anxiety among people, like French speakers like me, for example, when we go to school, we learn about, you know, like the English language, and we learn that um, in English there are regular verbs and there are irregular verbs. So, you know, um, people are pretty, pretty anguished about this. Like, there's a lot of testing about that in school, and People were talking about it. They're like, oh, you don't know your regular verbs in English. You're going to have a, you know, bad, uh, bad grade and so on. And it's, you know, I think there is good reason to be anxious about it. Because, for example, in French, you, a verb can have 130 forms, apparently, according to Pimsleur. And so um, I think uh, students are anguished. They're pretty anxious. They're pretty worried about that because they may get bad grades because... Uh, there are so many forms that a verb can take. The thing is, uh, if you learn about those irregular verbs in school, it's going to be very tedious. Uh, it's going to be done through uh, lists and just, you know, rote learning. But with Pimsleur, what, it's, what is going to happen is that you're going to have those daily lessons uh, where you're going to be listening to a lot of Chinese and you will pick up on those patterns. You will pick up on the irregular verbs. And even though there are lots of irregular verbs and, you know, not necessarily just verbs, but irregular sort of just exceptions in general in, in the Chinese language, uh, it can be very uh, difficult for someone who just follows a college class, but for people listening to Pimsleur, to Pimsleur, essentially you're going to notice that even irregular sort of uh, exceptions, they follow some sort of patterns and you're going to pick up on them and understand them intuitively. So this is not something to be, that you need to worry about. All right, now I wanna talk about uh, the last point of uh, Pimsleur and I'm going to um, talk about this in a little bit more length. I think uh, I've done a lot here, it's al already 23 minutes I hope you guys are still watching, but essentially I'm going to talk about vocabulary. Now, vocabulary, um, you know, I think not a lot of people realize this, but people like me who've been studying multiple languages know that vocabulary is the most challenging aspect of language learning. And uh, to become a fairly fluent speaker of Chinese or any language, 
you need to know about 5,000 words, okay? The 5,000 most common words uh, in that language. Um, by the time you know the 5,000 most important words in, in that language, you will be able to recognize about 98% of uh, the words in that language because they're used very, very often. The remaining 2% are much more uh, rare and you can learn learn them uh, later on but you know 98% is a fairly high percentage now if you um, if you want to learn 5,000 words it means that you need to learn about 10 words a day for a year and a half okay so it doesn't seem that difficult but as a matter of fact uh, you know, not a lot of people can keep up with this pace because 10 words a day is pretty easy, but the words pile up. And the biggest problem is that people actually just forget about old vocabulary. And so they're leaking buckets of information. Not a lot of people can keep up that pace, not because 10 words is a lot, it's not a lot, but uh, they, can't, they can't just uh, remember the old vocabulary. And uh, the solution for that is what Pimsleur, uh, there are two things that Pimsleur uh, has that other language programs actually do not have, which is, first of all, with Pimsleur, you're going to learn words with a certain sense of urgency, I would say, or uh, let me formulate this better. You're going to learn words in a way that is highly uh, relevant in a conversation setting. Uh, for example, in the Pimsleur conversations, they're going to tell you to participate and the guy is going to tell you, okay, that Chinese person told you this, how do you respond to it? And then you have to think. And because it's so relevant, it's so, um, there's a certain sense of urgency, you're timed, you are prompted to do something, you have a few seconds to do it, then you're going to think very hard and you're going to give your answer. And so because you were able to recall this, or maybe not, maybe you were not able to recall it, it's a much more, it's a higher stakes situation than if you were to just, you know, learn about this word in a textbook, for example, you're very likely to forget about it. So because it's a very high stake uh, uh, situation, it's not really high stake, but it's a very sort of realistic situation. Like a Chinese person comes to you and asks you a question, you need to answer, and so, um, if you give the right answer, you're very, very likely to remember that word or phrase in the future. So with the sense of urgency, you're going to, rem to remember things uh, a lot better. Now, the other, uh, the other point I wanted to make is that the reason why you're not going to uh, forget about old words and old stuff that you learned in Pimsleur is because Pimsleur actually uses something that is called graduated interval recall. And this is also called uh, space repetition. Essentially space repetition, let me pull up the, I think there is a, a diagram here. Uh, let me see, okay, so this is Pimsleur, Pimsleur's book. And at the end of the book, there is actually a, a graph here. There you go, I hope you can see it well. But essentially this is uh, graduated, uh, this is space repetition. If you learn something on day one, for example, a word or a phrase, whatever kind of vocabulary, you know, the following day or even after a few seconds, it's going to, uh, you're going to start forgetting it. This is the forgetting curve here. And you typically forget about things, you know, very quickly. But with Pimsleur, because you have day daily lessons, there it's going to be organized in such a way that you're actually going to be reviewing um, vocabulary and, you know, grammar stuff and so on from a day ago or from even you know a few seconds ago so there are intervals like that you're reviewing stuff at strategic points in time that make it so that you do not you will not forget about the stuff that you learn you're not a leaking bucket of information anymore you learn something here a few seconds after you know you start to forget it naturally but then you review it and then you forget about it and then you review it and you start forgetting about it and then you review it. And as you can see, every time that you review something, which is exactly what you do in Pimsleur, it's baked in the program, your, the forgetting curve actually gets flatter and flatter. You start to remember things in the long term. And so that problem of actually acquiring 5,000 words 
is not a problem anymore because you're not forgetting about the old stuff. All right, so uh, now <clears throat> in spite of this, I should say that um, with if you do the entire uh, PIMS or Chinese program, you're not going to learn the 5,000 most common words. If you look on the PIMSA website, they say clearly that each level, and there are five levels in PIMSA Chinese, is going to expose you, is going to teach you about 300 to 500 new words. So if you cut the apple in half, on average, it's 400 words per level. You have five levels, you know, 400 times five, it's 2,000 words. So <clears throat> this is about a B1 level. Uh, which represents, you know, with 5,000 words, you will be able to recognize 98% of all the words used in that language. But, but with 2,000 words, it's still a very high percentage. 80% of the words in the language you will be able to recognize. So there is no doubt as to the, you know, uh, as far as like uh, the fact that you're going to be able to have fluent conversations. Uh, with uh, Chinese speakers at the end of the five months. Look, I mean, you're not going to be at a professional level of fluency, no doubt about this, but you will be able to have conversations, that's for sure. Um, in addition to that, it's not only that you will be able to recognize uh, 2,000 words, when you reach a certain level at about 2,000 words, you will be able to guess about 60% of the words that you do not know because of the context, because they look like other words that you have learned and so on. So, you know, it's an added bonus. It's uh, very significant, actually. It's, it's very meaningful. So, you know, just uh, to end it with this review, I just want to talk about my own experience, not with Chinese, but you know, I'm a French speaker, my native language is French, and a lot of people actually, well, actually everyone in the French school system spent about seven years studying English. And at the end of the seven years, uh, most of the students uh, in, you know, in high school, at the end of a high school, do not have a B1 level because school is not structured in a way that is intuitive. It's not as, uh, as well structured, as well engineered as a PIMSA program. So that's basically it from, for uh, this PIMSA Chinese review. Again, if you want to get a free trial for PIMSA Chinese, check out the link in the description and you'll get a free trial. And after that, it's going to be a pretty affordable uh, subscription plan, about 21 to $22 uh, monthly. And um, I hope that you really like this review. My final answer is PIMSA Chinese is absolutely worth it. So check it out and let me know uh, what you think.